Let's see if I can get it to go live. Oh. Okay, we're live. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Yes, there we go. We are live on the right page this time. <laughs> I should be showing up on our phones here in a minute. All right, and we're going to wait for comments. So as we go along, please feel free to ask questions, make comments. I know it takes a little while for everybody to know that we are live. Um, yep, there it is. So I'm just going to a little while for Oops. everybody oh, to let me know come, that oh, Let me turn are... my phone down. <laughs> Uh, uh, and we'll be ready to go. Well, that was good. I powered down my phone, not just turned it down. I actually powered down. But everybody, we are going to get it together. Don't worry. Um, Lee and I've got this. And we kind of have a fun topic um, today because we're going to talk about um, hands on, hands off. And of course, the let animals lead method is a hands-off method. Um, and there's reasoning behind that and why we do that. And we want to talk about that. But we've got something else really fun. Um, for those of you that don't know, Leah was at the Care Foundation this past weekend. She's teaching a class. And the Care Foundation is in Florida. It has... It's a sanctuary for a number of animals, all kinds of animals, including wild animals, tigers and crocodiles and all types of animals are there. So she had just an amazing weekend. And the students, of course, were lucky. They had an amazing weekend with all those animal teachers. And so we're going to talk about some of that. I definitely want Leah to share that. And maybe we can get some um, pictures pulled up from that weekend because it's it's just a phenomenal place to be wouldn't you agree Leah yes I'm looking at myself and I'm like <laughs> I, I had dental work so I look like a stroke victim right now and <laughs> it's totally bothering me mm, it's yes, perfectly it fine was, everybody has dental work <laughs> yes, it was really a fun trip to care. Um, oh, Darlene's here. Yes, Darlene, I wish you could have made it. Uh, There's lots of reptiles. Although um, one of the, uh, oh God, she's not a boa. She is, she's not a bull python. A little wild because, for everybody to know that. Um, she, God, she's some kind of big snake. Anyway. We can no longer hold her anymore because they changed the laws in the state of Cal in the state of Florida, so that these snakes were considered considered um, an unauthorized pet, and so now we can no longer um, work with some of the snakes oh, really? um, and hold them. Yeah, so that was a bummer. But um, Kristen bought out one of the um, bull pythons. And she held her, her name was Medusa. And then uh, we had some incredible encounters with the crocodile and the tigers and these cute little foxes. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you the foxes. They were adorable. So yeah, so um, lots of really fun experiences. They have a little raccoon, um, Louise, who's been there ever since I've been going there for 12 years. Uh -huh. And so we, start, we started going there in, um, so I guess 11 years. We started going there in 2011. So this is our 11th year um, and yeah. So Louise is 21. She's a little raccoon. She's probably one of the oldest raccoons in captivity. So wow. we get to see her and she was so cute because one of the guys was working with, was sharing space with one of these foxes that had been gotten in a fight. It was her fault, the little fox's fault, but her little face was kind of tore up and he was, had his back to Louise and her friends and Louise was reaching out to him to um to get his attention it was so sweet and he didn't know because you know he was sharing space but she really wanted some reiki so then he went and did a special session with her but yeah it was really quite amazing 
That's pretty special. Absolutely. And it's interesting to find out about the snakes now. Are there other animals that you guys couldn't approach any again? Or mm. We usually get a little more um, close with the tigers because we're considered volunteers. Um, but because Kristen has had so much so many problems with fish and game and the um, and the wild, uh, USDA, you know, wildlife protection that um, we were a little further from them, but still the tigers and everyone. It was really interesting because, you know, we go every year, but we couldn't go last year because of COVID. Right. And, um, and, and COVID at that time was pretty, pretty rampant. So there wasn't even like, maybe we should go. It was just, yeah, we can't go at all. And so that was the first year, the first time in 10 years that we had missed going to care. Wow. And when we went, the animals were so excited. They were up at the front, they were engaging, the tigers were chuffing and rubbing on the fence and so excited to see us. That was really cool. It's like they knew, they recognized you, they knew you were coming. Oh no, they they remember me and they know who we are, but it was really cool because um, they were just so excited to, have Reiki again because they love to teach it's their it's their teaching session too it's not just us teaching and sharing they get to teach and so they love that and um, it was really exciting so the students just had an amazing time with these animals that is so fabulous and that's you know when we think about that so these are tigers these are snakes these are crocodiles Um, these are animals that we could not just go up and touch, which, you know, typical human Reiki is a hands-on practice. And a lot of people just adapt the human Reiki to animals and they use hands-on touch. But this is a great reason um, why that's not a good idea. I mean, you don't want to just go up and touch tigers that you don't know and crocodiles that you do know even. Um, So you don't want to just be touching these wild animals. It's dangerous for you. But then that gets us thinking, they respond and they respond really well. Why do we need to touch animals at all unless they request it? Well, and what was interesting is, so Ngozi is a crocodile there. And Ngozi um, was, the, before we even got there, she was giving Kristen issues. She wouldn't get into her pond and it was getting cold. And I guess the, the little pond that they had made her, it the water's warm, it's well water. So it's warm for them to get in. So you'd think it'd be cold, but actually the water is warmer than outside. And outside was like 55 and they could freeze and she could die. Um, so she, she wanted Ngozi to go into the pond, but not the day before we started doing Reiki and she wouldn't do it. So when we were there starting class, I said, I really hope Ngozi comes. Um, oh yeah. Kelly's here and Kelly's oh, worked yes, with Ngozi. Kelly. So Kelly will love this story. So Ngozi was being really bad with Kristen. Like she, Kristen has it because Kristen you can't go in with Ngozi. She's a crocodile. Crocodiles run really fast. She'll attack her. So Kristen had a pole to, to prod her into the pond and she got just far enough. And so Kristen was trying to get her in there and she wouldn't. So then Kristen tied a noodle to it, right? To get it to, so she go, and Ngozi's never done this. She grabbed the noodle and ripped it out of her hand and threw it in her pond. And so there was this little noodle in there. So we get there and I'm like, okay, we're not going to see Ngozi because Ngozi usually hides. Um, and, Ke- and Kelly can testify to this. Um, and Gozi usually hides. And this time when the students, I said, you know, if somebody could go work with Ngozi, that would be great because she loves Reiki when she's open to it. Who knows if she will be. And so two of the ladies went down there and Ngozi was in her pond and she was actually swimming. I've never in the 11 years that I've gone there ever seen her move. She's only moved if she's been fed, but usually she is just stone still. And she was swimming and she was coming up and she was letting her whole body. And then finally she settled with just her little head out and she stayed that way all day. And Kristen couldn't believe that she was actually engaged and that she was out and we could see her little head. And she's like, oh my God, this is a miracle. So then the next day when we went back, 
we went down to to offer to share space with her again. And she was out of her pond and close to the fence. So she was even closer to the students when they sat with her. It was just such an incredible experience with her because that's completely unheard of. And who would think, I mean, when you think of crocodiles, you don't think of them as animals that would approach you for to walk into that space that they would be the ones who would want that energy but it just goes to show you know we have this perception of the animals they're wild they're crocodiles they're this uh, and it's not that we humanize them but they are energetic beings and they are so advanced as far as recognizing energy communicating with energy than we are well, yeah, and, and Kelly can attest to this, you know, um, when Kelly went and worked with her, Ngozi's energy is so deep and strong. So when she connects with you, you just feel this, whew, and she's got such loving energy. I mean, it's it's such an incredible experience to meditate with Ngozi. Um, it's, it, it, words can't even describe what you feel inside and in that deep connection. And I wish I could verbalize it better. And, and oh, we had well. a, Kelly said she learned about stillness from her. Yeah, right. Because Ngozi doesn't move, yet she's completely engaged with you. And, and it's a beautiful, beautiful inter, interchange of energy. And of course, Ngozi's holding space for you. You're just kind of joining her. But um, it was a really cool situation because I, there have been times with Ngozi where she won't come out of the weeds. Like you'll kind of see her hiding. Um, but the last few times we've gone, she has been open to us and, and more to the front. Well, this time it was like I said with the other animals, you know, it, we'd missed a year and you could tell repetition is very important to these animals because last year we missed it. And this year we went back and everybody's like, yay, we want to be with you. And they also had a new tiger. He's 21 as well, just like Louise. And he's a white tiger and he was so friendly. He was used in a magician's act before. And so his uh, new owners were moving and they are building a big enclosure. And so Kristen was boarding him and he was just a love. And we had such great connections with him. And so lots of really fun experiences out there. And then of course the monkeys and the foxes and the tortoises and everybody. Right. That is just, it's gotta be phenomenal to be there. Um, yeah, it is. So, yeah, and it is. and you had um, someone you were teaching with, Nicholas Pearson. That had to be a treat. Yeah, right? so wow. Yeah, because speaking about hands-on, you know, Nicholas was saying that Asui, you know, we have the chair treatment from Asui, right? Because Asui strongly believed that if your mind was healed, then your body would follow. So there was no need for hand positions. Hand positions came with Dr. Hayashi and um, with Mrs. Takata, right? So Dr. Hayashi had a certain set of hand positions and then Mrs. Takata made it even more, um, more, I guess, formalized. Mm -hmm. But Mrs. Takata even believed that you should only go for people where your hands get drawn, right? So if you were going to, to work on a knee, you wouldn't do all these other hand positions, you would go straight to the knee. But with Asui, he said that wasn't that he didn't do complete hands off, but it did start that way. But probably with Asui, he would only have done one hand. So like just set his hand this way or set his hand this way. Or it wouldn't have been like this. It just would have been one hand, which I found really interesting because with human Reiki, that's been translated to adapt for animals, which is not our system of Reiki, but other animal Reiki systems, they are insisting on hands on. I've seen people hover their hands, put their hands on the body of the animal. That's not what the let animals lead method does. And it's really not what Asui's original intent was, right? Because he would sit with people and they would get healed from his energy. Just like when we sit with the animals, it's like we're going back to that original teaching. We're sitting with an Asui but it's an animal being a suey. Yes, I love that. That is such a great way to look at the animals mm -hmm. and really understand how connected they are. You know, and I think that's 
a lot of the problems that we see in the world today is people are disconnected. They're disconnected from each other. They're disconnected from animals. They're disconnected from nature. We are, except for maybe these things, um, you know, we are disconnected and these could be part of the reason why we're disconnected. Right? All right. Yeah, so the animals have this ability to just remind us, hey, we're all connected and you need to remember that. And they want us to remember it, I believe. Oh, no, I think I think that was very apparent. I mean, they were so open to connecting and just like the little story of Louise reaching out to Elvis when Elvis was working, you know, sharing space with the fox over here. And she's right behind him in a, in a big cage with a bobcat and three other cats. You know, her little paw was reaching out and Kelly knows Louise, just reaching out towards Elvis to, you know, to touch him, to, to get him to see her to come over. And, you know, at 21 years old, she's probably arthritic and everything, but, but she's been getting Reiki for our sharing space for 11 years. And she's such an amazing teacher. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's really cool experiences. And I hope that everyone gets to go to care at some point. Yes, absolutely. And I like how the repetition um, allows the animals to look forward to your arrival. You know, I have a farm animal sanctuary where I take my students here in Las Vegas. And I've noticed some of them, you know, just keep coming back and volunteering with the animals, but they know us. And the minute mm -hmm. I come yeah. in and it doesn't matter who I have with me, if they've met them before or not, they know that something good is about to happen. And the horses, they follow us around. So they really do get to know and look forward to it. And that's, that's again, they're just so in tune to that energy. They can probably pick up on our intention, you know, that we have excited students who are there that are going to be offering Reiki. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's for the first time if it's a level one class. So they're really excited about it. And the animals just know. And they're oh. such wonderful teachers. The funny story, there's, um, we, we kind of took our chairs all around the property so that when we were even talking about the class, we were immersed in the animals. And um, it was really cute because at one point we were across from Lola the bear and across from Lola the bear, there's these little macaws, there's three macaws. There's two that are like blue and yellow and then one that's like a multicolored. And so it's Zazu and Sonia and Bosa, or Bosa, Bosa, I think. And they were um, just soaking in the Reiki. But then when we started talking, like Nicholas said something, he goes, and you know, that's kind of funny. And they would go, <laughs> they would laugh. And then we were laughing. And then they started to mock us. They would go, when we weren't talking, they go, he, 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 okay, he, 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 okay. <laughs> it was so funny. I wish I could have taped it. It was just so funny. But it was like they were just so, because usually the macaws are pretty loud. They're like, ah, ah. Oh, yes. and especially when people are around. And this time they were just like still, and then they would sit together and they kind of like, you know, clean each other, but just listening and listening. And then we did um, the Reju and they were just completely engrossed in it. It was really cool. We had such an amazing time oh, just, with, so just cool. experiencing all the different energies of these animals. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and going back to that, you know, they remember, like, we don't think they remember. We think, Oh, I haven't seen them for a year, but, that energetic connection is an imprint. And so when we come back, they know that, they know us, they know what's gonna happen and then they get so excited. So it just was another reminder that, you know, you do make an impression. We think, oh, you know, we start to get up here and really if we come here and with our hearts, you, your heart doesn't forget, right? And that's what the animals show us. Their hearts never forget. Right. Um, they all remembered us, you know, Nicholas had only been there for the first time two years ago and they remembered Nicholas. You could tell by how they excited they were, you know, um, Kamara, the lion was, you know, he'd look at me and hoo, 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 and then he'd look over here at Nicholas and same with Daenerys and Daenerys had a, a really wonderful moment with Nicholas. So, you know, that they remember us and, and that's what makes that place so special too. Yeah. And, you know, think about it. 
if the wild animals remember you and um, are so in tune to that energy, think about your pets or the animals you live with, you know, even if it's just a feral cat in the backyard, like I have, you know, that comes and eats and it hangs out. I've got some little shelter for it. Think of the impression that you're making on them. Mm -hmm. And then we have to ask, what impression is that? So is it a good one? Or, you know, are we letting our stress and our anxiety affect us? And then that energy is going to the pets and it can be reflected back. So it's a good question to ask ourselves, what, what are we putting out for our animals, for other people, everywhere we go. I mean, everywhere we go, our energy influences something, whether we want it to or not. So I guess the question is, will it be a good influence or is it going to have some kind of negative or not necessarily negative, but you know what I'm saying? It might just bring more anxiety to those around us. Well, and it's why um, animals, you know, like they like certain people, they don't like certain people because, you know, I was telling the students, you know, imagine that when we go to visit these animals, right, you know, we're going up to offer to share space and we come up and we look like we have all this baggage, right? Because it's energetic baggage and our light is so dim because of all this stuff we're carrying around. And once we start to let that go and open up our heart and open up our mind and let go of all those attachments and all that crap and that trauma, then they start to see our true heart. And that's what they open up to. They're not opening up to, oh, she's a nice person. They're opening up to who we really are inside of our hearts. That's beautiful. And that's a good point because so many people are animal lovers, you know, and before I found Reiki, I was an animal lover. I truly was. I've ever since I was little, I've grown up around all kinds of animals. I've always loved animals, but there's a difference between being an animal lover. And that's a good thing. I'm not saying it isn't a good thing, but you can take it deeper. You can make a stronger connection. And if you love animals, you know, just that idea that you can go even deeper. First off, some people think, how could that be? We're already so deep but it is possible and it can happen with any animal, not just your pets. It can be a wild animal that responds to it, that has something to teach you or show you. And it'll usually be when you least expect it. Absolutely. And so that's pretty powerful when, when we can through the system of meditation meditating with animals, you know, the let animals lead method that we use. When we can do that and develop this deep trusting relationship, it not only transforms the animals, you know, they enjoy it, but the transformation it has on us. And I know I am not the same person I was when I first started, um, learning Reiki, I learned the human method, like over 18 years ago. And I studied from a lot of different teachers, and it was all the human method. And in every class, it never failed, like right the last day, the last half hour, they mentioned something about pets. And it was, yes, you can use Reiki on pets, they really love it, but you don't need to do it very long, because they're more sensitive. So I automatically, oh, I couldn't wait after my first class because I had a Jack Russell and she was two and she was typical Jack Russell Terrier. She was absolutely wild. And finally, by the time she was two, she would lay down beside me just briefly on the couch. And I had finished up my class that weekend and I was sitting on the couch and there she was laying still. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's laying still. I can give her Reiki. This is so exciting. And I put my hands on her and she immediately lifted her head, jumped up, went across the room, laid down against the wall and gave me the dirtiest look. And it was so, okay. I didn't know 
I did everything wrong, but I didn't know that. So I started thinking, I did something wrong. I can't do this, right? I started beating myself up. Oh, this doesn't work. I'm doing it wrong, whatever. And I would never be able to offer her hands on again, because she was not going to tolerate it. But what she did, and I didn't know this at the time, she accepted it. But I would sit and do my meditation on the couch and she would go to the far end of the couch and lay down. I always thought she wasn't accepting it until I learned the let animals lead method. And then it was like, well, this makes perfect sense. Of course, she got upset because I did everything wrong. I didn't, you know, ask her permission. I immediately touched her and she was not the kind of girl that was going to tolerate that. So she had a lot to teach me. Right. And I love the fact that when we let go of these hand positions and trying to do something, that's when the magic really happens. When we just sit with an animal, become present, open our heart, just be who we truly are, the response that we get is magical. And you experience Mm -hmm. that at care from wild animals. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. And what's really cool is that care is kind of um, in, it's like in a protected little kind of area, lots of trees, it's not open to the public. And they have farm animals as well as the wild animals. And there's a ton of wild birds. So when we would start meditating, um, everybody would be quiet and and engage. And there was a buzzard that would like fly down really close. And then he'd kind of go off, you know, when we would stop and start talking. And then as soon as we went back into meditation and who knows, maybe he thought we were still and he's going to eat us, but I don't think so. It was like, he just kind of like go around and then he'd go to different areas of the property and kind of, you know, just, and then he'd fly off and we had a bunch of crows come and, and, you know, kind of engage. Yeah. So it was really, was really quite magical. Mm-hmm. And for those of you watching who don't know, Leah is the crow lady. Crows <laughs> come to her, so of course there was crows there flying around. Well, that was really funny because Kristen said there's never crows here, and there was like a huge murder of crows um, throughout the day on Friday and Saturday. And she goes, "I have never seen the crows do this." So I don't know what they were up to. (laughs) Oh, the word was nice. (laughs) They put the word out. Hey, she's going to Florida. Go visit her. (laughs) I love love that. Yes. And I don't know if you have any pictures up yet. Mm, I do. Um, Let's see if we can. Just so we can see. Did you give me permission? I did. Oh, you did. Okay. I remembered to do that. I got on the right Facebook page. I'm good for... (laughs) <laughs> so so these are oh, the little foxes oh my gosh look at them now i don't know if we can see it on <coughs> facebook let's see let me uh, yes it's on facebook okay okay perfect okay so let me um so these are the little foxes it's ginger and oh gosh i think it's maverick is the maverick is the black and obviously ginger is the and so they were very friendly oh she, she was a little skittish but very friendly um let me see if i can yeah here we go and that's one of the little goats. Oh, that's one of the students with Kalua. Okay. Uh, this is during the the Zuda you meet. And that's the little ferret. Uh, this is Kamara up here, and uh, just connecting with the student there. Mm-hmm. There's Ingozi. You can see she's covered with her little. They're like little flowers, little green moss flowers. Um, okay. So there she is, and here's the students are right here. Um, let's see. Oh, and that's. Kamira, that's, oh, that's me and this little baby monkey, Ava, feeding her a bottle. She was quite ready. That's Katrina. And then there's, um, that's Mary working with Ginger. And everybody look at their eyes when we get like a close up of the animals. Look yeah. how relaxed they are. Oh yeah, they were really relaxed. There's Daenerys, she's getting Reiki. There's a student over here. She's completely zonked out. There's Nicholas with a ferret. There's Kristen. There's the little monkey, Ava. She was a hoot. That's, oh, that's a great picture of Kamira. <laughs> he was zonked out from the Reiki. He wouldn't even move. So this is when we were doing class. Oops, that's when we were doing class um, with by the macaws and by Lola. 
Lola was hibernating the bear. So she just kind of would kind of put her hand up and then go back down. So she was engaged, but not, so. these are more macaws. And they're usually really loud and they weren't, they were very, very sweet, very engaged. Oh, and that's Gilly, uh, one of the little alligators. Brutus, um, Kelly will like hearing this if she's still on. Brutus is now too big to hold. So now he's like, you know, really big. And before he was really small, like Gilly there. Um, and that's walking meditation. There's a little ferret. There's Chimera, he's getting Reiki. And he was very, Elvis is over here, the student, and he was very engaged with Elvis. Um, that's that's Daenerys, sorry, that's Daenerys. And there's the little maverick. Kind of go, oh, so that's what Nicholas is doing. Reiki with, um, this is Katrina. So she was really, she remembered Nicholas. And then this is, uh, these foxes were very skittish. So it was amazing that she came out and was engaged with him. And so again, you know, this practice is so hands off and unobtrusive that the animals really connect. Oh, that's <laughs> Katrina smelling. When they smell their own pee, they go, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so she was doing that. Um, and there's, there's, this is the macaws. Um, let me see if we can play this. I don't know what. Oh, we were doing, we were doing the chanting and Bosa was, Bosa was like doing his little, here, we'll go back here so you can see. He had been like just doing a little bounce back and forth. And then when I stopped, he kind of shoot, but then he would go back and do back, oh, back that, and forth. It was really sweet. That's sweet. And there's Amos is a spider monkey and he's with Nicholas. And there's Nicholas doing, uh, that's Katrina out in the yard. And he's doing, sharing space, I should say. And there's mm -hmm. Gilly again. And then uh, this is Ronnie with, um, uh, Daenerys is right there in front of her. So you get a lot of, now here we're teaching class or well, actually this is the end of the meditation. I just had to take a picture. You can see they were all just hanging there. You can't see Zazu, she's right here. But they were just so engaged with what was happening. Right. And nobody's looking at them. Nobody's pointing towards them. Mm -mm. They're just picking up and joining in the space. So this was interesting. This is like a blue heron. And Ngozi is over here on the far left. And the little heron was across the way. And so I had to take a picture of that because the Ngozi could kill that heroin. And she was just there hanging out, taking in the Reiki, just like Ngozi. Mm. Um, and that's the foxes and the bears. And there's Nicholas teaching. And there's the little, so there's Zazu. She's right here. And here's little Bosa and Sonia. And they're just hanging out, listening. And then they, they started laughing at something he, he said. <laughs> and there's Kamara. And there's Vicky, one of the students. So here's, here's a great picture of, you can see Ngozi. So this looks a little further than it really is, but there's the fence and she's only like three or four feet in. And then here's the students doing Reiki and she's really taking it in. And she would move her head to like to look back, which is also something she doesn't do. And there's one of the little monkeys. I can't remember it. That's Andy or Rosie. And there's, there we go. Lots of Zooty U ones. And here's the little goats. Oh. Okay. And they were they were really so they were sitting here. The student there's students over here doing Reiki, and these ones were all very engaged in that. And that's, you know, for goats to engage, they're usually jumping, kicking, doing something. Right, right. And they were just completely still. Um, I'm trying to say, oh, this is one of the turkeys getting Reiki from Sarah. Let's see here. There's the little, that's during class. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I think we've, I mean, there's tons of, but they're all gonna be pretty much repeat. Right. Here, I wanna see if we have that. Um, I wanna show you all the white tiger, oh, there he is. This, if you could include Hollywood in your, um, Reiki sessions. Hollywood is 21 and he's severely arthritic, but he is the sweetest, kindest, 
um, tiger ever. He just is so sweet. Now, is he um, the one that came from the entertainment industry? He did. He was a magician's assistant. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh, there's Ava. She was so funny. Um, yeah, he, she, he, he came as a magician's assistant. And they're really hoping he can live his last days. So here's Tyrion. And, and so when we show these pictures, you know, it just seems like all this is sitting here. Just, But there is such a strong connection. When you're walking around, it, the whole property is just still. And you could really feel this connection between the two of them was so strong. Um, and that's the really the beauty of it. You get to share space with these wild animals and feel this deep connection. Like how many of us can say that a tiger um, connected with us on such a deep level? And not very many of us can. Right. You know? mm -hmm. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping I can, hoping I can get the white tiger. A lot of these just got, the way it, the way it loaded on my eye photos, there he is. Let's see if, let me see if we can see his little face. It's getting a drink. Yeah, and so when we send Reiki, we don't want to focus on his his um, arthritis or that he's having a problem. We want to see him as the beautiful, majestic tiger that he is. And he's so sweet. When they chuff like that, that's what they do to a friend. So yeah, that's just a few of the, the pictures that we had. And I was just going to see if there's anything more here that's so incredibly exciting i don't think so i and, think these were you know what a beautiful location as well i know it was cold there. oh it was it very was cold Florida and you don't expect it i think it was colder there than it was where i'm at but it was you know, the plants you know all the grasses the trees they're all absorbing this energy too oh yes well and that's the whole thing this property and as, as i know that kelly can attest to as well this property is just magical um it's it's just a, a certain i don't know i'll just keep saying it magic there um you go there and you can feel like some of the girls had sat down and leaned against trees and they said oh you could just feel the energy from these trees it was just beautiful and i can't wait to take you out there jamie i know i'm looking forward to it absolutely because <laughs> i've never been there yes but it's true when you get around just some of these trees, you can just feel the energy mm -hmm. from them. And, you know, people may think that's nuts, but it's true. And mm -hmm. if they've ever read the book, The Secret Lives of Trees, this was written, I can't remember who wrote it. I loaned it to a friend and she's reading it, but it was a man who was out in the forest doing experiments for a very long time. And they found that trees communicate with each other as well. And it's through energy, right? Mm -hmm. And so even, you know, I guess I used to joke around in some of my speeches, I would say, so the question you should probably ask yourself is, are you smarter than the average tree? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No, that's what I have to ask myself. Am I smarter than? So, so when they say, when you say they were communicating, what does that that mean? They put out chemical and electrical signals, and they they measured this. Uh, and this was this appears to only happen in natural forests, not mm -hmm. for you know trees that have been planted by us, but it's a natural forest, and they know. When one tree is struggling, they will send nutrients through the root system to that tree because they need it to survive because for the natural forest, they need everyone. So this is a lesson humans could really learn from it. We are not smarter than the average tree when it comes to that one. So they, they send food, they send nutrients so that that tree doesn't die because if it dies, there's an open space that can be something that is harmful to the forest that emerges there and grows there. So they know they have to take care of their, their family, if you want to look at it that way. And then there was another study done, and this was in Africa. 
And there's a type of tree that the giraffes like to eat. And they come in and they just clean it out. And they've found that when the giraffes start eating the trees, they will actually put out like a chemical substance that's poisonous, but it's not going to kill the giraffes. But what it does, it travels through the air as like a warning to the other trees. And it's like, alert, alert, alert. Um, so those trees know, oh, those guys are under attack. They're going to be coming here next. They actually change and put out that chemical. So that by the time the giraffes get there, they don't like it. They taste it and go, oh. So they have this. Isn't that incredible? No, isn't it incredible? And all this time it's been going on, but of course we didn't know. And through, you know, with humans, if we don't know how to prove it, if it, our microscopes won't measure it, if we don't have the right tools, then it can mm -hmm. exist. And that's kind of how we are. But finally, we are able to measure some things that shows Somebody's going to take, Amy is going to take you ladies on a dog walk with us while you continue to talk. Okay. Thank you, Amy. Thank yes, you for joining us. us and and, well, and thank that. you for staying connected. That's so sweet. It is thank sweet. You. But I just think it's so fascinating, you know, so the trees can do that. You know, the animals do that. Mm -hmm. we oh, absolutely. Have that ability, but I think we've forgotten it. So what if we could get that back? Well, in, in fact, Kelly, um, who's on the call, Kelly and I went to Keepers of the Wild, which is a wild animal sanctuary over by you. You've been there, I Jamie. Mean. And when we went, we, we taught the, um, the staff level one. Oh, excuse me. And when we um, got there, it almost felt like, you know, they, they were like welcomed us so rapidly it almost felt like the animals that care had connected and shared they're good you know it's okay you're gonna love this because the acceptance of these animals was so quick right um it was it was insanely quick i don't think i've ever experienced that and i wish we could bring kelly on and maybe kelly can comment on it i'm not sure if she's still listening but it's you know it was really is wild. I, I had been there before you guys visited and I didn't go to teach. I just went with a friend and it was kind of a wintry day. It was the middle of the week. We were the only two people there. It was like, it was our private time with the animals. And so you've got these beautiful cliffs and they're secluded and it's just really pretty. It's a Southwest beautiful scenery. And I decided, well, nobody's around. I'm just going to start chanting. And it echoed just because of yeah. you know, the environment there. But it echoed through and the animals responded. You know, there was chaos. And I know you guys know chaos, who is a white tiger. Now, many of these animals come from the entertainment industry from Las Vegas, where I am at. And they are not treated the best. Uh, it's not a healthy environment for most of these animals. So when they get there, they can be a little neurotic. And chaos definitely was neurotic. He paced and paced and paced. And then the staff said he, he always does that. You know, we're even careful of him because we just don't trust him. So I just stood in front and chanted. And he was pacing and pacing. And then he slowed down. And he just got slower and slower. And then he just laid down. And nobody could believe it. But it's like, yeah. So it was, the you know, our sound, right? Mm -hmm. As energy. The words we speak have energy. And when we realize that, everything, the food we eat, the books we read, all of it has energy. And when we think about that, we need to get really careful about what we allow to go, what we put inside us as far as our food and our words. You know, when you say, they always say, oh, you know, be careful what you say. You can't take it back. And that's because words have energy. Yeah, um, it actually, Kelly, and I think Kelly, because Kelly is saying that, um, that, um, 
she said it's really amazing to how how open the animals were there and then also she had never seen a white tiger in person before and it was really cool that after class you know because we taught for two days when we were leaving all the animals were so engaged and chaos was one of the ones that was right up at the front leaning up against the the fence um connecting and saying goodbye to us and and just completely laid down now like you said chaos pace all the time because he was declawed and he's in a lot of pain and so he doesn't relax like that so it was just really amazing but you know that is the power of this practice and like this is yeah and it was so quiet i know because because when we first got there it was very you know loud there's ravens there's everything mm-hmm. and when we left at the end when we were saying goodbye they were even doing tours everyone was so calm and quiet and it was just so beautiful and you know this practice the precepts that we share the mindfulness that we instill that is really what the animals love and they respond to so lovingly right yes. they see us and like what you experience with chaos you know that 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 act of seeing them and saying you're important you matter and i'm here for you it made such a difference right to him and so he stops pacing cuz he's used to people just looking at him going oh why tell you old oh, and you actually said i see you you're important and here i'm going to hold space with you and that just made the world a difference just like when kelly and i were there um yes. it was just so amazing right you know and i think yes i saw him transform he calmed mm-hmm. down he relaxed but mm-hmm. the biggest transformation that day was in me and right. my friend even though she's not trained any of this she was there she was with me you know standing beside me and i think we had a much bigger transformation than the animals did oh definitely and i think that people downplay the power of just seeing these being mindful and seeing these animals just saying i see you you're important i love you right cool. i mean imagine you don't have to have any special technique it's just that power of presence the power of connection the power of you matter i see you right we all want to be seen yes. every single being wants to be seen and i think that the keepers of the wild animals what they were showing us is they saw us too right not only did we see them they saw us and they said thank you i have this beautiful picture of kelly with one of the lions and um we were saying goodbye and kelly stopped at this lion's you know in front of his enclosure and just the soulful look that he gave her when we were leaving it was just it makes me want to cry now too because they saw us they said we see you and we know you're here and we know you're here for us and that was amazing just i'll never forget that trip it was so powerful and that's what we get at care every single time and i would really love to bring that to animal rescues all over the united states and the world Yes. Yes. That power of presence. Yes, for all the animals, all the workers, everyone bringing that what a gift, you know, to do that for everyone. You know, right. animals for all of us. It's really really important. Yeah, Kelly said she couldn't break con- eye contact. It was true. It was it was just so <laughs> beautiful that just it was immediate. It was I see you. You know, first he saw me and then I was walking on and Kelly just stood there and was, you know, just mm-hmm. being with him. And I have just the most beautiful picture of the two of them and and just it almost even captures that intensity of that connection. And you know, here is a lion, she didn't know him, she didn't work with him. She didn't um, you know, have any um what intense yeah, I was yeah. intense yeah. Kelly. Really really that's the best word for it because it's a complete stranger yet it was such an intimate deep connection and he wanted to make sure that she felt it right like he just you know when a, a lion is just staring at you and not blinking and it wasn't a hey i want to get you it was he was completely relaxed and almost getting sleepy 
but he was just, I see you. And it was like there, his way of saying, thank you. And right. we had so many animals do that to us. The little, one of the little bears, a little grizzly bear did the same thing. And they said, oh God, she never comes out. She's never close to people. She doesn't like people. And um, another one of them, I think Cindy, the cougar, same thing. Oh, she hates people, but she was out and she was engaged. So it's, it's a really powerful practice. And I know Amy is saying that she had some great experiences too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And uh, Amy um, asked if I was the Jamie from class. It's Amy from Las Vegas IP Touch. So I just want to give a shout out to her. <laughs> she created um, the IP Touch program and got it oh. into the college here. And I took that class, I think it's back in, it's, it was a while ago. Um, so I just. Oh, that's so nice. It. Yeah. I'm glad you found us, Amy. Definitely. Yeah. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this practice, I mean, I think that, you know, if you just want to try, if you're not, if you're not trained in the let animals lead method, but you want to try, I would just suggest, first of all, bringing love and joy to your heart and then just go sit outside and focus on your breath and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, squirrels can come up, birds we'll stop it. Maybe you want to say a little bit about that, Jamie, because I know that where you live, you have a beautiful backyard and a lot of times the birds will come, but birds yeah. are a little bit different. Yes. I have a lot of birds um, with birds as with most prey animals, they're prey animals. And you have to remember that. So they are always on the lookout for danger. They're not going to stay around for a long time, but if a bird just comes up, uh, for a few seconds and is still, that's accepting this space that you've created. And what I found, um, I have little budgies, which people sometimes call parakeets, and one flew into my yard. So it's the animals that need help find me. I've had three ferals move. I have a desert tortoise and they live outside underground. There's a burrow. And I've had three feral cats move into that burrow. Usually in the summer, they're seeking relief from the heat. And then I feed them once I realize they're there. The first one, he stayed for about a year and then he disappeared. I don't know what happened to him. Uh, the second one, he I saw his little, I, well, at first I walked outside and I heard this cry, this pitiful cry. And I thought it was a child at first. And I thought, is that a cat? And I did the kitty call and this little pitiful black face stuck out from the burrow. And I'm like, okay, I have another feral. Let me go in. I keep cat food because I have ferals. And I ran inside, got some food and he was out of the burrow. And I thought, okay, I better be careful. I don't want to scare him. You know, I got to go in there. Oh my gosh. I stepped in there. He was rubbing against my legs ended up taking him in the house. He obviously had been somebody's pet. He found a wonderful home. He's now living in Michigan. I get pictures all the time. He rules. Yeah. The and then I recently had another, and this one's very feral because it, it's, you can tell it's scared. It's got the big eyes. Mm -hmm. And I just sit, you know, patiently and sit outside and enjoy the space and offer it love and let it know it's safe. You can, and it's all fenced in the tortoise habitat is fenced in. So the dogs can't get them. The food will be there. There's water. You're safe. You're welcome here. And so they tend to find you. Yeah. You know, and they show up because they just know they feel the energy. It's like, okay, I'm going to be safe here. Even, even the wild one who, you know, his eyes still get, he's cautious of me, which is a okay in my book. Right. Because some people are not very kind. So please be cautious. They and know people that aren't you can come here and be safe. Yeah. And, and I think that really we can't see it, right? It's energy but I feel like there's this lightness, right? Almost like the sun. We say that when we do this practice, you're like the sun, right? And you're shining your rays. So these animals, they really literally see that light coming from your house, coming from you. And even if they're leery, they still know that there is safety there. And I, I love that so much. Yes. And when they're in that kind of situation, 
just the fact that they come, you know, yes, this cat is keeping an eye on me, but sometimes I look at it and its eyes are soft. And Mm -hmm. even if that's just a couple of seconds, that tells me it's responding to this energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you're out in your backyard and you don't think anything is happening, it is, trust me, it is when you're just in this place of peace and, and acceptance and sending love to whether it's the animals that show up, the plants that show up, it makes a big difference. The insects too, like the bees, the bees will slow down the flies, the butterflies, the dragonflies, they will all come around you. The spiders, you know, Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what can happen in that space when you're open to it. Right. The carpenter bees, I'll be sitting outside doing my meditation in the morning, you know, in the summer and, or spring. And here comes the carpenter bees and they just kind of buzz around and Mm -hmm. they, they respond to it. Yeah. No. And I mean, I feel like with this practice that we have, you're never helpless and you're always there just shining your beautiful light. And we don't, I don't think understand just how healing our light is. That when, you know, you're stressed or it's just like if you sit next to a good friend and you're really stressed out and your good friend's energy is just so calm. They don't have to say anything. It's just that energy and you are, you feel comforted. And that's what we can offer to these animals and these insects. All beings is our beautiful sense of just love and presence. And anybody can learn to do this. Yeah. You know, that's what's so not magic. It's. It's not, you don't have to be special. You don't have to be a monk. You don't have to have, be anything like that. Anyone can learn to do this and bring it into their life. And I am just so grateful that I found it and it has transformed my life so much. It's so powerful that I can't even say enough about it. I don't even remember life before the connection kind of, you know? No, I know. I know. Like we, we are all animal lovers, right? We were yes. we've been animal lovers since we were young, but, um, and you, you think you have a deep connection, but you have no idea how much deeper you can go with yes. this. And so let's see, Darlene, um, I felt a connection with, you know, was that before I knew anything? Uh, no, I really know. Yeah, I know, Darlene, you should go visit um, the Sacramento Zoo again. And just go say hi to them because I'll bet you if some of those animals are still there that were there when you were there, um, they'll remember you. And now you can probably really see and really connect and understand that they actually do see you. Because I think that you would be able to then, you know, immediately recognize when they lock in, that's when they're saying, I'm seeing you. You're important. You matter. I love that. Thank you, darling, for sharing that. Yes, that's wonderful really good well we're at the top of the hour and that was really nice and thank you all for coming and sharing us kelly thank you so much darlene amy for commenting we really appreciate the comments um and that helps keep the conversation going yes and of course you know if you guys have any questions or any topics that you would like to see discussed, you can let us know, put it in the comments or send an, a message on Animal Bonds Facebook. And we would love to discuss the topic or answer questions. We're always looking for ideas. <laughs> yes, we are. And if you'd like to be a special guest, let us know too. I would love for Kelly to join us. Kelly's got some great stories. And, you know, Kelly is the director, the East Coast director of the shelter animal. Well, really, she's the director. of the. Sh- <laughs> I, we say East Coast, but she's East Coast, West Coast, wherever, um, of the Shelter Animal Reiki Association. Oh, there's a hawk over there. I was looking. And, um, and she actually has brought on, oh my God, at least six or seven shelters to the to our organization. And these are all shelters that are open to the Let Animals Lead method of animal Reiki, thanks to Kelly and her teachings and her support. So it'd be really nice to have Kelly on as a special guest so she could share what she's doing and maybe give some tips to other people who are looking to get into shelters to share this amazing gift. Absolutely. 
I'm sure you, we could talk Kelly into doing that maybe. Yes. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Thanks so much. We really uh, enjoyed having thank you. you. Darlene. Yes. And uh, Darlene, Darlene's always interactive and I so appreciate that. Yes. We need people on comments. It's yes. not enough just to come and watch us get on those comments. That's right. So we can ask questions, make comments so we can respond. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have <laughs> to get Kelly on there. That. Oh, Jamie and Kelly Lena's show. Kelly. It's you guys' show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Kelly. So maybe next week we can have Kelly, if that works out, Kelly, putting you on notice. <laughs> we would love to have you share. Calendar, Kelly. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and thank you so much, Jamie. Back. Yes. Thank you, Leah. We will be back next Wednesday at four. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Right, thank you.